Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a laptop that I really liked last year that has now been improved for this year. And this is something that is not readily available here in North America, but you can get it from sites like GearBest and whatnot. This is a Xiaomi Air 13.3, and this is a 13.3 inch laptop but it has a GPU built in, an MX150 from NVIDIA. This is one of their newer generation graphics processors. So in addition to being a nice little work computer, it's also pretty good for playing games on it too. We're going to be exploring a bunch of those games a little later in the video, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. However, GearBest.com provided a discount for me to buy it from them for this review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This costs $839 as you see it at GearBest right now. There might be a sale going on every once in a while, so the price may go down or up. I'll put a link directly to this one uh, down in the video description because they're also selling last year's version, which doesn't perform as well as this one, that almost looks the same. So you may wanna make sure you get the right one when you are out shopping for it. 13.3 inch 1080p display here, IPS, uh, very nice viewing angles on it, nice and bright, really good color on this display too. I'm really quite pleased with this. It almost feels like a MacBook in many ways, both in its build quality as well as its overall uh, display quality here too. Really nicely put together machine here and I'm quite uh, pleased with uh, this one as well as the one that I looked at last year. It has an i5-7200U. This is a mid-range processor that we've seen on a lot of similar laptops here this year. Eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. The RAM is not upgradable, but you can upgrade the storage. So this one as configured has 256 gigabytes of solid storage state storage and M2 SATA drive, but there is a second M2 SATA drive in uh, the motherboard here. So you can add in a second M2 drive and also replace the first one if you want to really uh, dramatically expand the storage on here, which is very nice to see. So you do have some good storage options. As I mentioned, we've got that MX150 GPU, which provides some pretty decent graphics performance for gaming. Wireless AC is built in as well. Uh, weight on this one is 2.8 pounds or 1.3 kilograms, so not all that heavy. Uh, really nice aluminum design here. It feels really uh, nicely put together and uh, something I think you might uh, like to carry around with you. And it has this very nondescript build. When it's folded up, there are no logos on it or anything like that. It is pretty uh, generic looking. Uh, one thing to note here on the back is that it does have an air intake here at the bottom. So you wanna keep this area clear uh, for cooling. And I do wanna talk about the fan a little bit on this. It's very hard not to have fan noise on a laptop this small, especially when you are uh, integrating a GPU into the mix too. And I've seen a lot of laptops around this size. All of them have fan noise, some more than others. Uh, this one does have some pretty audible fan noise, nothing worse than what I've experienced on other laptops like it. Uh, but I did notice the pitch of the fan is a little lower uh, than some of the higher pitch sounds of fans I'm hearing on other laptops. I'm thinking namely about that uh, Yoga 720 from Lenovo, which has a more high pitched fan noise to it. Uh, this one's a little lower pitched, but uh, nonetheless, especially if you're playing games on it and stuff, you'll definitely uh, be hearing that fan. But again, it wasn't offensive to me, but some reviewers out there who've been looking at this said it was a pretty noisy fan. So I think it's going to be one of those things that it's a personal preference deal more than anything else. But for me, it wasn't any worse than what I heard on other devices. And again, uh, the sound was a little less annoying to me than I found on some other laptops. I really like the keyboard on here. These things usually come with very nice keyboards and this one is no exception. Uh, decent travel to the keys here, nice full size keys. Uh, it is backlit as well. So if you are on a plane or something, you'll be able to uh, see what you're typing. They also integrated a fingerprint reader into the mix here also. It's a very thin reader, so sometimes you might have to give it another uh, shot like I just did there, but generally it does unlock pretty nicely once you have it all configured and it works through Windows Hello. And I do want to mention about the Windows uh, version on here. So when this showed up, it was running a Chinese version of Windows that was activated, but it was in Chinese. You can, of course, maybe try to get the English language pack installed on it, but what I decided to do just for testing purposes was wipe it out completely and install Windows from scratch, and that was what we did here. I downloaded the uh, Windows uh, media creation tool and got the US version installed, and it went in just fine. Uh, in fact, Xiaomi has a great website with drivers up the wazoo, so you can get every driver you need to get this up and running if you do wish to reinstall the version version of Windows for your particular market. Just note though that the version we installed was not activating, so you will have to buy 
uh, a license for your region if you are not running this in China. But these laptops are sold uh, primarily in China, so uh, you will need to get yourself a uh, proper license for your particular area of the world. For ports, you've got just a few on this one. Full-size HDMI output over here. You have a USB 3 port here, a full-size USB 3. Headphone microphone jack output over there. On the other side, we've got another USB 3 port and a full-service USB-C port. So this handles power, data, and video. Uh, the power adapter they give you in the box right here, it's a 65-watt adapter. Uh, this thing will likely work with most of those single cable USB-C docks that are out there. So you do have some choices as to how you power it. Uh, we did test it with a USB-C monitor that had a built-in dock, and we were able to uh, get the whole thing working through a single cable, which was kind of cool. Unfortunately, this is not Thunderbolt. This would be the killer laptop for me if it did have a Thunderbolt port on board. Uh, but alas, it is just USB Type-C, so just keep that in mind. Battery life is not spectacular on this, especially if you have the GPU enabled. So we were getting about uh, five or six hours or so of battery life. So maybe get you through most of your workday, but uh, these things are not known for good battery life, at least insofar as uh, all day is concerned. So you will uh, probably need to bring that power adapter with you when you are out and about with it. Speakers are on the bottom here, pretty nice uh, sounding speakers, pretty loud, decent range of sound, not spectacular, but uh, better than I've seen some, in some other uh, laptops in this form factor, so not so bad on that front either. So that is the overall hardware. Let's get in and see how this thing performs. We'll run our usual barrage of tests, and then we'll have a bunch of games at the end. Stick around. So let's take a look at a couple of things that we normally look at on laptops like this, beginning with my YouTube channel. We're running at 60 frames per second at 1080p, no drop frames, everything working as it does on other devices like it, so that was a good thing. We also pulled up some websites and also found that those uh, loaded up very quickly too. We ran the speedometer benchmark test on Google Chrome and there we got a score of 125 which puts it right in line with all of the other i5-7200U computers that are out there. So let's move on now to graphics performance. Remember we've got that MX150 GPU in here. This is based on NVIDIA's Pascal architecture, the newest uh, technology they're running with right now on their graphics processors. And I want to start off uh, with some benchmarks first and then we'll look at some of the games. And I want to compare this uh, to the 940 MX version of the Xiaomi 13 we looked at about a year ago. And if we take a look at the 3 d Mark CloudGate test, which is what I ran on that other machine, uh, we have a pretty big uh, difference here in score. So 9,831 for the new 13.3. Uh, last year's got 7,645. You can take a look at those graphics scores and really see the significant difference that uh, this new GPU brings into this hardware. A pretty huge bump on uh, that benchmark, which really represents kind of a mid-range game. So you will see some pretty decent gaming performance uh, improvements here over the prior generation hardware. I also took a look at the TimeSpy benchmark, which runs in DirectX 12. Uh, there we got a score of 907. Now of note here is the Acer A515 that we looked at a few weeks ago, which also has that MX150 chip built in. That one performed just slightly better on the graphics tests versus uh, this one. And it might just be due to maybe some uh, thermal decisions they made here to keep that GPU running cool enough to prevent uh, overheating. So the uh, MX150 on the Xiaomi here seems to be clocked just slightly below what we saw with the Acer, but uh, in general gameplay, we're not seeing a huge difference here, but it does show up on this test. And speaking of thermals, we run the 3D Mark stress test on these devices. Uh, we got a score of 99.4% on that test, which means that over 20 successive tests running back to back, uh, we did not see any notable thermal throttling here. So it's able to keep itself uh, relatively cool, uh, provided of course you've got that uh, area on the bottom there clear to keep the airflow going through the device. Let's take a look now at a couple of games and see how it does with some newer AAA titles. So let's kick things off with The Witcher 3, and you can see some of the settings that we have in place for the game here. Uh, we were getting about 25 to 30 frames per second with The Witcher 3. Uh, it's a little under what we saw with the Acer, which was getting between 40 and 50 frames per second. So a little under that, but again, still playable as a AAA title on here. Uh, we also ran Grand Theft Auto 5. You can see some of the settings we have for that. Uh, we got frame rates on that game at around 45 to 55 frames per second. Uh, that compares closely to the Acer, but we were able to push the Acer occasionally to about 60 frames per second or so. But again, still very playable here on this little 13-inch laptop. 
Uh, the new version of Doom runs very nicely on here as it does on many other computers with a GPU. Uh, we got frame rates between 40 and 50 frames per second, which lines up with uh, what I saw with the Acer. And you can check out the settings we had for Doom right here. And now let's move on to Dota 2, uh, which came in around 75 to 100 frames per second. And you can see uh, what we got for uh, settings right here. And uh, that compared very favorably to the Acer. And if you thought you could get through a review of mine without Minecraft, fear not, here it is. Uh, we got Minecraft running at anywhere from 170 to 230 frames per second with the Optifine Performance Enhancer plugged in, as well as the GPU enabled for Minecraft. One of the things that I found on laptops that have discrete GPUs is that you have to pop into the NVIDIA control panel and force that GPU on all the time for Minecraft to work with it. It doesn't seem to do the automatic switching uh, when you load it up. At least the Java version of Minecraft has that issue. And related to that issue was our tests with Kodi. So when we ran our 140 megabits per second, 10-bit HEVC file, uh, it worked fine when we had the Intel graphics enabled, but did not work as well when we had uh, the settings forced for Minecraft to have that GPU running. So it doesn't do well with the HEVC playback in Kodi at least with the NVIDIA uh, chipset forced on. So when we uh, went back to the normal switching thing, uh, we were able to get our usual Kodi test to run uh, just fine on here. So any kind of multimedia you throw at this laptop is going to run uh, just fine because it does have one of the current generation i5 KB Lake processors. So all in, I am very pleased with this laptop as I was with last year's laptop, not only because it's a very nicely put together and well-built laptop from an engineering standpoint, but also because they packed in a very very usable GPU that provides a significant graphics bump over uh, similar devices that don't have GPUs at this size. And I think that uh, really is what separates this laptop from many others that we've looked at. So not only is it good for playing games, you can also uh, do a lot of video editing and uh, maybe some engineering work and certainly some coding on it because you do have a good amount of graphics horsepower at your disposal. It's not going to blow away a huge gaming laptop, but it also weighs less than three pounds and uh, comes in a form factor similar to many 13-inch laptops that we've looked at yet delivers significantly greater graphics performance as a result. $839 right now is not a bad price for this in my opinion either. Again, you pay more for the smaller form factor and better uh, build quality and I think it is a justified expense here. Uh, the only thing I would like to see on this is a Thunderbolt port versus just the USB Type-C. Again, that would make it the killer thing for me and I did forget to mention up front that this is not a touch screen either. So it does have a shiny display uh, but you will just do nothing but add fingerprints to it if you do decide uh, to touch the screen. But otherwise, a uh, really nice little laptop and something I am comfortable recommending. But I do want to give one little caveat up front here, and that is about long-term support. Now, normally when I review one of these laptops from China, I say, look, buy at your own risk. The company may not be around long enough to support the thing you're buying for those cheap uh, Chinese laptops we look at. Uh, this is a little different because Xiaomi is actually a pretty established player in the uh, China and Asia market, and they do have a few products now that have made their way to uh, North America. American shores as well. But this is a laptop that is not sold really outside of China unless you go through Gearbest or a similar distributor to get one of these things. So uh, this is an area where I think if you do have a problem, you might be able to get it resolved, but it might involve shipping the laptop all the way back to China at your expense. So if you do have issues here, you may not get the same level of support that you might get uh, with another company that does sell domestically in your marketplace. So just uh, be advised about that. I'll keep an eye on this thing over time. I'm going to hang on to this laptop actually and use it uh, quite a bit here on the channel moving forward. So if I do have a support issue, I will let you all know uh, how it was resolved. But so far, so good, at least for uh, its initial first impression with me. So that's going to do it for the Xiaomi Air 13.3, the 2017 edition. And this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, John Prawl, William Miller and Charlie Walden. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.